Have you ever tried putting a gradient on a border and it didn't work? Before and after pseudo elements will enable you to do basically everything that is not possible with normal CSS. If you're like me and you don't like the design of the default bullet points of HTML lists, then just remove them and create them yourself using a before element. Or if you want to animate something on the element's background, just do it with an after element. Sometimes you just want a little design element floating around your website. In all of these cases, you would use the before and after elements. Basically, whenever you want to do something creative, but somehow your normal CSS properties won't do what you want, like trying to put a gradient on a border, then you would use these pseudo elements before and after as they make the impossible possible. But enough with the praising, let's see how it actually works. When you have an HTML element, it usually consists of an opening and a closing tag and content in between. Now, when you address your element in CSS and write colon colon before, then think of it like inserting an empty element before your text content. If you use colon colon after, that would be the same thing but now after your text content. Since this pseudo element is completely empty, you have to define everything yourself, even its content, which is the first property you need to set. You can assign any type of string, which is now going to be placed exactly before or after your text content depending on what pseudo element you're using, but they are basically the same thing. You can apply all the styles to this element with the CSS properties that you already know. There is nothing complicated about it. But here's the thing. If your element is only used for design purposes and does not need any text content, then you would write an empty string, meaning no text at all in these quotation marks. But you still need to write this declaration for it to actually work. So the content property is required, even if it's empty. Now, when you have no text content, the styling is a bit more complex. As we don't have content, the element size will be zero, which is why we can't see anything. Even after adding a height and a width, we can't see the element, as we don't have applied a position. Now, we have made a tutorial on positions already. Check out the info card for more. But basically, applying position absolute will make your pseudo element visible again because now it is on a new stacking context. We also need position relative on our h1 heading. This way, the absolute element will be positioned relative to its parent. Now that we have position absolute applied, we can use the properties top, bottom, left and right to position this element exactly where we want it to be. I want to create an element that basically underlines the heading. So I first apply bottom zero and left zero to have it over here. And then I adjust the height and width to make it underline the entire heading using 100%. And since h1 is a block level element, it will be very wide, which is why I have to adjust the width of the h1 heading as well. I set this to max content. Now this looks pretty simple and unspecial because we can achieve the same thing by just using text decoration underline, right? No, because now I have the entire power of CSS at the palm of my hand. Since this behaves like a real element, we can put gradients on it border radius, or even hover effects, transitions and animations. All the fun stuff you need to reach unlimited creativity is now possible. Here is a redesign of the bullet points using a before element. Here is a cool hover animation for a button using an after element. On a side note, when using absolute positioning, it doesn't really matter if you're using a before or an after element, as they will be forced onto a new position anyway. They both behave the same way. If you like the way we explain things on this channel, you might want to check out our website codingtogo.com. There, we already have a full HTML and SEO course available, and we will be adding CSS and JavaScript courses in the future as well. And now you know everything there is about before and after. If you're interested in how I made the button gradient work, then you can watch this video right here.